Hey guys, I really like this this little remote. Um, I so I'm not getting anything from these guys. I ordered this tripod and I'm really happy with it. It's an Acuvar. Acuvar is what I got, and it came with a remote shutter, so that I've got you guys on the tripod. You're over there across the dip bench where you get a better view. Um, it's plugged in, so my phone's charging. Um, I just put stones into soak so that I could sharpen Skylar's end tack with the slides pattern. Um, no, this isn't slide. Is this slide? I can't remember. So many different patterns in the Farm Forge Knife Works world. Um, this knife's going to need taken apart, cleaned up a little bit, probably. Um, but there's an issue with the detent. I'm going to take it up tomorrow night when I go to Farm Forge and get that taken care of. So it's early in the evening here on Thursday in San Diego and while my stones are soaking before I get started I had a couple questions that came in so um, and they were kind of about knife construction and so one was about knife construction and one of them was sharpening angles so you know, a lot of my knives have what are called backspacers and a backspacer simply is that it's a solid piece that goes across the entire back this is a full backspacer covers the entire length of the edge this is about a half backspacer. Um, my Riat is just a little bit more than a half spacer. Um, and then you have knives like, I don't think, except for that custom that I've ever seen at Farron Force, it had a backspacer. Then you have standoff or pillar construction like this, where you have the shouldered pieces in there, and uh, it makes it does make the knife a good bit lighter. This is a fairly heavy knife, even though it's an aluminum. Um, this one's really light because it's carbon fiber. Um, but a backspacer, what's the difference? What purpose does it serve? Like my, I would love if this had a backspacer and it was done in the toxic green like this. But sometimes I'm partial to a backspacer because a knife goes in my pocket and there's keys and coins and all kinds of other stuff. And with nothing in there. There's nothing to stop those things from getting up against your blade. Uh, car keys are famous for getting up against a knife blade. But I've just learned to carry my car keys in my other pocket. Um, coins, things like that. But in the big scope of things, it's up to personal preference. It's up to the maker, um, things like that. Um, I like backspacers. Problem is, a, an enclosed back on a knife you don't get a bunch of pocket gunk and things building up in here on this knife. Um, I just cleaned it out recently, probably, yeah, it's clean. There's nothing in there. Um, but stuff will build up down in there and then you have to take it apart and clean it. Um, one of the other questions that I got yesterday, um, because I put my phone number at the beginning of my videos on my business card, basically, was asking about um, sharpening angles. And you guys have heard me say that, you know, I don't measure my angles unless you guys specifically request it. But depending on the blade shape and things like that, that's how I'm going to determine what my edge geometry is going to be like when I sharpen. Uh, a lot of times I say that I kind of follow the manufacturer's angles. I say that, but it's not necessarily true. If I feel that that's an obtuse angle, I'll bring it back a couple degrees. Um, if I feel that it really needs it, I'll reach out to the customer and tell them, like, I can make it much better, but it's going to cost more because I have to bring it back a couple of degrees, uh, which takes work. This NTAC has got a fairly thin profile, but it is a little bit thick back here, and it doesn't, it's not too bad, but I'm probably going to take it back a little bit, not much, and, and then if it looks like it's going to cost extra, I'll, I'll get Skyler's take on it. But a lot of the angle a knife can be sharpened at is can the steel support the edge you're putting on it. If you've got some really crappy, you know, for some crappy 440A or something that hasn't been treated well, you know, you might want to think, like if you've got a, a $30 knife, you might want to think about putting a more obtuse angle on it because if you get it nice and thin like some of the edges that I put on my knives, that steel's not gonna be able to support that thin angle. It's gonna roll, it's gonna break off, you're gonna get your wire burr edge. It's just not treated the same. It's not near as nice as steel to begin with. 
so edge angles can be um, done thin if if the steel will support it. Hang on just a second. Um, my daughter just asked me if she can FaceTime. So I'm gonna pause you guys. I'll probably get this stuff done, but yeah, edge angles. Uh, the angle at which, the, you know, what can, what can it support? Uh, the steel sometimes just cannot support that thin edge. Um, AUSA 8, I would not put as thin an edge on it as I would say the super thin edge that's on my Archbishop, which is already a very thinly ground blade. Um, I thinned out the angle on this because, on my Fortis, because it's 20 CV. This V601, the, the S35VN on this is ring a good bit harder than, um, than Chris Reeves does. This will support a thinner angle. Um, these are bad. These are a pain in the ass to sharpen. I really don't like sharpening these, but when you get them sharp, once you get them down, man, they're wicked sharp. Um, I got a video somewhere of uh, splitting hairs with this. Just uh, I'll try and find it and make that thumb on here. I've complained so many times about them flying directly over our uh, directly over our house like that. Um, but yeah, the steel has to do with it, the edge geometry, the blade uh, that. The aesthetics. Do you want a really wide, shiny, you know, sharpening bevel on your knife? This knife doesn't have much of a one, even though it's really thin. The spinners, when I did the spinners for Chris and Elliot, those were ground really thin. My edge was even thinner than it is on this. Do you want, uh, let's see, that Chavez. That Chavez was super thick. And if I had thinned that angle, if, if I had narrowed that angle down anymore, well, he would have had a really, well, look like that, you know? It would have been really wide. Aesthetically, is that what the customer wants? If they don't care, and they just want it to be slicey and really super sharp, um, I say sh super sharp, it's always gonna be super sharp, it's just how well is it gonna slice? How well is it gonna move through the material, or is it gonna be wedged and blunt up against the material? So, um, yeah, it's just it just depends. Um, I am trying to do these little short videos and do some some uh, some quick content um, because I know I'm gonna have some bigger videos coming I got some stuff coming soon that I'm gonna be able to do videos about and it's just I want to get some of the small stuff in but more than that I wanted to answer the questions so I figured if I threw this out I'd be able to answer the question for not just that one person but maybe some other people because the edge geometry has everything to do with how that knife's gonna cut. But like I said, whether that steel can support that edge is a whole nother piece in itself. So there's a whole lot that goes into it. And you can kind of feel as you're sharpening, if that edge is gonna hold when you get it too thin, if you get it too shallow of an angle, as opposed to too steep, if, if you can find the right spot, but if you get it too shallow, you can just feel you can see that metal just rolling over because it's just not, it's not heat treated well enough or not a hard enough steel or a, a, a good enough alloy to support that kind of thing. So um, it's a, lot of, a lot of times when I do hatchets, uh, hatchets or axes for people, I try to advise them. I was like, you don't want this shaving sharp. This, this metal is softer. It's designed to, to take the impact of strikes um, because that's what it's, it's a striking object. Um, so if I'm doing a hatchet or an axe, you can get it where it, yeah, you can shave at the, at the front, but you don't want a, a super thin angle on it. You get it too shallow and that whole edge is just going to warp. You want to keep it nice and fat, keep that, that apple seed grind and, and let it absorb that impact the material behind that edge. So uh, that's the other thing. What's the purpose of the edge? So, um, I might do a little bit more video. I'm gonna get off of here. My daughter is texting me saying she wants to FaceTime me from Japan. So um, I just wanted to address those two things. So that's the difference between backspacer and pillar standoff construction. So, and edge geometry and, and what angles are good for what knives. There's no direct answer. I'm sorry if it seems vague, but that's just how it is. All right guys, get back with you in a minute.